Now, when I, I knew all of this when I came across the Baha'i faith, but I knew, uh, I, I will tell you a little story that kind of goes with this. Um, I turned to the Baha'is after uh, I heard what the Betsy went said, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. But I'm afraid there might be a catch, and I'm going to find the catch. It was like, it was almost too overwhelmingly beautiful to be true to me at that moment. And yet I was taken with it. I had to admit that it was beautiful. And so I asked for a book and they offered me uh, the Havel on the New Era. And I said, is that written by the Baha guy? He said, no. I said, well, I can't read that then. And then they offered me all things made new. I said, no, no, I can't read that right now. Because you see, I know that I can recognize the voice of my beloved when I see it. So all I need to do is have a book written by him and I will be able to tell. Well, they didn't come prepared for that, except someone remembered that they had a gleanings in the back seat of their car. And so they went and got the gleanings and they sent me home with gleanings. Now I was, I did tell them this, the next time you see me, I'm gonna be your worst nightmare because I'm gonna come prepared to do battle. I'm going to find out what the hook is. Are you after my money? What, what's, why are all these beautiful teachings? And then again I said, it, it, I understand that it's possible it could be true, but I doubt it. In other words, if given, I probably was looking at it 75-25 in favor of there being something I'd find, some disastrous thing that I wouldn't make it true. But I was taken. I was moved. I went home and my wife was baking cookies when I came home and I said, Joanne, um, could you put the cookies down and I, I want to tell you about my interesting evening. And she said, well, no, Ray, I'm in the middle of baking cookies and I, I can't put it down right now. I said, oh, come on, Joanne, this is important. Put the cookies down. And you have to know my wife, but this is very familiar. She says, Ray, cookies now, religion later. And then she said, Grandma's recipe is over there on the table. It was cut out of a newspaper 25 years ago and it had been passed along and she had it now. And she said, would you pick up Grandma's recipe and tell me what do I do after I put in the chocolate chips? I was aggravated. I went over there. I picked up Grandma's recipe off the table. I picked, up, I picked it up backwards. And there was a picture of the Baha'i Temple in Chicago. And there were all the principles of the faith listed underneath it. I put the paper down. <clears throat> Are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> My knees gave a little quake. That's been in the family all these years and no one saw it until tonight, the very night I first hear the Baha'i faith. And there it is, I'm back at grandma's recipe, and there's my wife cooking cookies right at this time. I knew how God works. It was just a wake up. You know how God operates. God's tricky. It would be just, and I actually thought, it's just like God. We have for 2,000 years been criticizing the Jews because they couldn't see. Wouldn't it be just like God? to come the second time and put us through exactly the same test and we are going to have the same trouble recognizing it. It's our turn. It would be just only fair for God to do it that way. I had better be careful what I'm doing. So for the next five days, I read a paragraph, seriously looking at it. Sometimes I'd get a little nervous. Sometimes I'd get excited. But on the fifth day, that night, or that afternoon, I told my wife, you know, Joanne, I think I'm becoming a Baha'i. But I wasn't ready to commit yet, but I just told her, I'm, I'm seemingly going that direction. That night I was reading Gleanings. I came across a passage. By the power of God's might, resolve to gain the victory over your own self, that happily the whole earth can be made free. I put the book down. Oh, I said, False prophets don't teach that. They teach you that them guys are the problem. The evil's out there somewhere. The true prophet tells you the painful truth. Here's where the problem lies of the whole world. 
me and all that are like me, which is all mankind. I am the problem, but with God's help, I'm also the solution. With God's power in my life, I can make, be a part of the solution. But I've got to admit first that I'm the problem. I said, that painful truth is taught by only God's messengers. Then I went to the next, the next uh, um, paragraph, and it said, O oh, people of God, do not busy yourselves in your own concerns. Let your thoughts be fixed upon that which will rehabilitate the fortunes of mankind and sanctify the hearts and the souls of men. 